James, over to you. Um, thanks so much, Akim. It's, it's an honor to be here um, under the leadership of, of the three heads of state and, and as part of this extraordinary coalition for, for $5 billion. Um, let me address both of those questions, um, the financial commitment and the role of indigenous people and local people. Um, Rainforest Trust is honored to pledge half a billion dollars over the next 10 years to support local communities, indigenous peoples, um, and community groups to create and expand protected areas and other effective conservation, uh, area-based conservation measures. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, that's actually been our mission since 1988, but the urgency has only increased. And um, thank heaven, our donors, mostly concerned individuals, have risen to the occasion and enabled us to make this pledge. Um, developing countries such as Colombia and Costa Rica have led the way in pledging to expand protected areas um, and also globally in supporting the High Ambition Coalition and urging the rest of the world to join on to this 30 by 30 pledge. Um, but this requires financial support. And while a few wealthy countries like Norway are in this room and, and stepping up to this challenge, um, many others are not yet. Um, private money, as Andrew was saying, is not a replacement for that. Pri private money, like these, the $5 billion pledged here, can do two things. First, as Andrew said, private money can act fast um, and do conservation now, and that's critical given the urgency of the biodiversity and health and, uh, and climate crisis we all face, but also, private money can challenge the public sector to match and step up to the plate, um, which, is, which, is, which is where the real finance has to come from. And that's a critical role too. Um, let me turn to your second question, which was um, the role of indigenous people and local groups. Do you want to rephrase it or I just go? No, 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 no go ahead. Just um, to say one minute, please, because I'm getting signals. <laughs> please, sorry. Um, well, I was just talking last week to one of our implementing partners on the ground in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Um, and they told me that the communities that they deal with are pleading for their forest to be protected because they know that when outsiders come in and they log and they mine, the people who were there first get nothing. They lose out. Um, and that's why, for example, in that country, all the projects we are doing are supporting indigenous and, and local groups and community reserves and, and forests. Um, going forward, we pledge that half of all the, um, the investment that we make will be specifically for indigenous land titling and other systems of gaining ownership and, and management authority for local and indigenous groups. Um, where governments and local groups want to expand traditional protected areas, as in Colombia, um, we will require independent um, verification of pre prior of free prior informed consent. Um, and every single project we fund will have a livelihood component to benefit local people, right. whether it's through tourism or carbon or integrated development and assistance. James, I commend you for that because I think prior informed consent is something that indigenous peoples have been advocating for a long time. And as we know, 